Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at the future of attacking football as we explain Fernando Diniz's Fluminese tactics. And subscribe if you're new, smash that like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. Before we can explain the tactics of Fernando Diniz, we first need to explain what relationalism is in football. European football has become well accustomed to the idea of highly organised and structured positional play, with the likes of Pep Guardiola's tiki-taka based approach seen as the preferred method of possession based teams. In most possession based systems that follow the positional approach, players operate in a structure with predetermined space or zones on the pitch. Players in these systems largely hold their positions in their respective zones with the ball coming to them. In European football this is more commonly known as juego de position or positional play. Meanwhile a relationist approach sees players move towards the ball creating and exploiting space through their actions. This approach will still see an initial structure but there's a lot more freedom to roam in order to create overloads around the ball. Unlike positional play, space in a relationist team is a lot more varied and depends on the pitch or game state. This is a South American approach that's commonly known as Jogo Functional or the functional game. Relationalism is a lot more chaotic with simultaneous moving parts as players create space in the chaos of their interchanges, whilst positional play is much more deliberate and measured. Like all systems and styles, the nuances and amount of freedom varies between each setup. But the emergence of Lionel Scaloni's Argentina, the 2022 world champions, and the vibrant football played by Fernando Diniz has sharply put the relationalist approach into the spotlight. So why are we focusing on Fernando Diniz? Diniz has grabbed so many headlines because despite being one of the oldest clubs in Brazil, the homeland of football, Fluminense haven't been competitive for a number of years. With just the 11th highest value in the Brazilian Serie A last season, Diniz guided Fluminense to a third place finish, with their highest points total since they last won the league back in 2012. Meanwhile this season, Diniz has guided Fluminense to just their second ever Copa Libertadores final. His tactics are also very extreme, with notable differences to positional play. They've also been some of the most successful of the recent relationist styles, with very eye-catching displays against the likes of Sao Paulo and River Plate. That being said, there's an overlap between relational and positional approaches, and we see some blurring between the styles. At Fluminense, Diniz's starting formation is largely irrelevant. However, for the purpose of this video, to make the explanation clear, we largely say that he's set up in a 4-2-3-1. Defensively, Fluminense are a fairly straightforward team. Like a lot of the best sides, Fluminense defend in a narrow, compact 4-4-2 block. They also look to win the ball back through proactive pressing, often transitioning to a midfield diamond to win the ball back through their man-to-man -man aggressive scheme. This is fairly standard stuff, where Fluminese become really interesting is when they have the ball. As mentioned in the intro, under Fernando Diniz, Fluminese are a relationist team, as opposed to a position-based side. This means the players have a relationship with the location of the ball, rather than the position they're supposed to be in. As you can imagine, this can create all kinds of wacky shapes and the players can pop up all over the pitch, with midfielders becoming wingers and fullbacks getting into the box. That being said, a good reason as to why Diniz has been so successful is that his team isn't completely crazy, and they still have some fixed positions in the team. For example, the centre-backs are almost always in a traditional centre-back position at the base of the shape. Defensive midfielder Andre is usually the deepest player and acts as a constant passing option and controls the tempo and helps protect the centre-backs in the transition. Meanwhile, there are always players in the wing positions that hold the width for the team. These players might not be the players who started in the winger positions, but needless to say, there's always width to Diniz's attack. In terms of positional instructions, that's about it for Fluminese. So it's time to talk about the relational trends that makes functional play so exciting. Apologies, before we dive in for my pronunciation, I will try my best. In possession, Fluminese look to flood the area around the ball giving the player who has the ball lots of short passing options. This is often referred to as tilting, and in Diniz's tactics, we usually see the creation of O Circulo Bobo, which translates to the 
silly circle. Frequently formed by four, five or six players, Fluminese resemble classic street footballers in these moments. The sole of the foot, tricks and skills are used to slow the tempo of the play, giving time for the circle to form as players move into position. The key concept here is that the ball can quickly be recycled within the circle with short passing. Two, number one, create easy passing options for ball retention, and number two, make progression through combination play easy. What makes this even more dangerous is Fluminese can lure their opponents into a false sense of security by slowing the play down before they increase the game speed with dynamic combination play and carries. Generally, this allows Fluminese to overload the area of the pitch that the ball is in, which makes progression, retention, and creating chances even easier. Most teams will want to stop this happening and try and win the ball back, but that means that at least matching Fluminese's numbers in the area, or it requires very careful and disciplined pressure. The problem with both of these approaches is that defensively you have to be very energetic to match the tempo of Fluminese's short passing, and you have to win your duels when the opportunity presents itself. Number two, Fluminese can play around the pressure with one or two touch combination play, even if they're man marked. And number three, with safety players in deeper areas and other players across the pitch, Fluminese do have safe passing options as out balls. What's more is that even if Fluminese lose the ball in the circle, the number of players around the ball makes counter pressing extremely effective. What makes this even more effective is the fact that the circles are usually created in the wide areas where the touchline acts as a natural barrier to limit the space, making counter pressing even more effective. So whilst the Bobinho circle might sound silly, it's a great tool in and out of possession. With lots of players in close proximity, this opens up the possibilities for the in-possession motifs that are synonymous with a relational style of football. Toko Imivoi literally translates to I pass and I go, which is probably the most common attacking play we see from Fluminese. Pass and move combinations or one-twos are exactly what makes Diniz's teams such a great watch, because when they combine this with tilting, they can carve through an opponent and play quickly to progress the play. But but a big part of this is the tabula, which translates to the table. If a player wants to conduct a pass and go, they need someone to connect with. This player is the tabula. Whilst this kind of concept is found in all kinds of football, it's even more important in the chaos of relationist football. If a player passes and moves for Fluminese, they're extremely aggressive in their movement. Unlike a positional team, nobody will drop to cover them as they advance. So the job of the table is to hold on to the ball for the right amount of time and then run least with an accurate and well-weighted pass. If they get that wrong, their team can be exposed by a failed pass and move. Another common tool in Fluminese's arsenal is the Escadinas. This means the staircase or ladder, and is a methodology of progressing the ball using diagonal lines. These ladders are common in progressive football because a diagonal line spins the defender as the ball breaks their line. But this also puts the passer on the blind side of his marker, which can create dangerous opportunities for pass and move play. The close proximity of players in Fluminese's relationist approach means that there can be multiple players on the same ladder. This opens the door for another common event in teams coached by Fernando Diniz, the quarter lose. This is basically a pass and move scenario that involves a line of three players, where the middle shapes the receive, but dummies to let the ball roll over to the furthest player while spinning in behind. This can cause extreme chaos in the final third, and is a common tool used to unsettle a back line and create a chance the score. A final pattern of play we see in Fluminese's tactics is called the yo-yo, one of the biggest differences between relational and positional play. What happens is that Fluminese will overload one flank which will draw the opposition over. They then work the ball back to the deeper player to open the switch of play. So far this sounds exactly like positional play, but here's where it changes. As the opposition start to shuttle over and stop the anticipated switch, Fluminese quickly play the ball back to the original overloaded flank often completely catching the opposition off guard and finding their attackers in a fresh overload. The use of the yo-yo in these situations often leads
leads to a lot of chances for Fluminense as they capitalize on the overload with combination play and rotations. What makes this even more dangerous is that because Fluminense generally have a nominal winger on the opposite side to receive the switch, if the opposition doesn't shuttle over in anticipation, then Diniz's men will complete the switch, creating a new overload on the opposite flank. So is relational play the future of attacking football? The true answer is yes and no. There are benefits to this style of play, especially against the positional team. Positional teams generally prefer a zonal style in both attack and defence, so the crazy overloads of a relational approach can cause major problems. And ask questions like, do the players break their shape to stop the ball progression, or do they stick to their principles? However, a relational approach can be overcome by a ball-orientated Gagan pressing style, like like Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool or Borussia Dortmund, who could match the relational overload and flood the area around the ball to force turnovers. Football is very much a complex game of rock, paper, scissors. Some styles have natural strengths and weaknesses against others, and relationalist football is no exception. This player-led approach provides the players with the knowledge and the skills to overcome fresh challenges within a game, and this is where the true strength of the style lies. Currently, positional play is the dominant style in the world, descended from the Dutch school of football. Positional play has had the most recent development at the top level of European football, whereas South American football, and by extension the relational style, hasn't had the same level of money or top level development since the 1980s. However, in recent years we've started to see a shift. Fernando Diniz might be to functional football what Pep Guardiola was to positional play. But there have already been some successful sides in European football. Luciano Spalletti used a form of functional play to guide Napoli to their first Serie A title since the days of Diego Maradona. Carlo Ancelotti has thrived at Real Madrid using a similar, although far less extreme approach. Whilst Roger Schmidt quickly rose to prominence thanks to his success at PSV Eindhoven and now at Benfica. But for relational football to take over Europe, I expect we'll need to see Diniz himself to make the step over. Like with positional play, only once there are several disciples coaching in top European leagues will relational football reach its perfect form. But anyway guys, what do you think? Will functional play ever dominate European football? Or is it too chaotic to succeed? I've been Satman Dave, subscribe if you're new, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?